particular organization might have all the departments. But what if tomorrow, let's say, you're going to work for a product based or a small, uh, mid-sized firm, they don't uh, invest much money on uh, resources. Okay, at times people okay. might ask you to do some other tasks. So especially if you ask anyone, business analysts will do. There is no uh, a definite okay. answer for uh, someone who manages or manages the requirements engineering and the requirements management process. Do a little bit of testing. So that's what uh, a business analyst will do. But if you ask me, uh, you need to know about uh, the, your organization structure, the way you do business, the way the business will come into your company, uh, what kind of pre project initiation things you do once they start, why you're choosing uh, a definite methodology, and then uh, how you implement that methodology, you know, as part of the methodology, as is, what are your roles, and as it probably you have. Uh, your project stakeholders like developers, testers, what are their roles, what is your project manager role, what kind of phases we're going to work with, what kind of documents we manage, so uh, we require. If you see, this is all I'm going to start with. We're going to start with the hierarchy where you probably, the way uh, we hierarchy going to be, and something on career path, it's all, uh, you know, when, when you come up with the draft version, you hardly write, you know, three or four pages. You have all the sections. We'll maintain a template, and then down the line, if I see, if I show you my real-time, you know, project requirement documents, people are one ten pages, one thirty pages. We don't write it in one day. It might be those projects which we are dealing for the last two years or three years, something like that. Uh, yeah, okay. I share with you. Okay. It's in situations of conflict, Shakil. Do you find you can maintain a neutral or at least a balanced position and see both sides of the argument? You can actually get into the business analysis and make yourself uh, you know, in the business analysis uh, domain. But to get into this, to accomplish that, and what are the skill set you required? That's what you can see on my screen right now. That's what uh, we're going to start with: the hierarchy and the career path. And you, you might have seen uh, multiple designations. Not every organization going to call you as a BA. Few organizations call you as a systems analyst. Few organizations mm -hmm. will call you as a requirements analyst. Few is might come as a fancy designation. We never know. Process analyst, right? So what are these designations existing in the mm -hmm. market, and what are the roles and responsibilities of those guys? And you might have heard. You said you're working for a Dell project. I said I'm working for a TransUnion project. So what is this project set all about? And if you see any successful project, it has a project manager, a BA. Yes or no? Uh, then again, one more thing. Because we're breaking if you off. see my screen here, yeah. if you see any successful project, it has a PM and a BA, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So why does a project need a project and a business analyst? And the role of a business analyst in a product-based company sort of services. We take any organization in this world. Take Dell, for example. Dell is a product-based company or a services-based company. If you're going to start your career in a product-based company or a services-based company or at times those organizations, even my firm, the place where I'm working, you know, we have our own products and uh, we have we are into the services too. But we have a, we have actually a banking product. So I even dealt with. Uh, there's a bank called ANC Bank. You might heard about it. Australia, New Zealand Bank from Australia. But right. I dealt the same bank with uh, Singapore and Vietnam. We have a loyalty management system. We sell the loyalty management. We sold the loyalty management system to them. So, so what are your roles going to be? What are the factors you need to look into before you step into the, these organizations? Okay, that's what we will see. See everything from a BA point of view. And then there is something in which you need to know. That's called RFP. You heard about this before? Request for proposal. No. no? Okay. No. We're gonna no. see that. And something on enterprise analysis. This is a little bit about uh, probably, as you said, uh, about the domain, the way you understand the business architecture, and uh, mm -hmm. how can you gather or how can you probe questions and gather some information. Once you have information at hand. What kind of feasibility studies? What what do you do as part of a feasibility study? And uh, once you guys understand the requirements completely, then we will take a call. But before we do that, 
we need to discuss uh, we need to look into the you know, the financial aspects of the project as well right so at the end of the day the reason why you're doing a project is to generate some revenue for the organization organizations are there to generate revenue they are not uh, you know, a freelancers or uh, they're not into the service industry right Right. But industry. isn't that uh, uh, wouldn't PM would take care of that you know the financial aspect of yeah I, I agree uh, they do people? They, it's not uh, always a project manager even the people uh, you know the senior management the people above project managers they will do uh, the cost benefit analysis how much we are investing how much we need to expect what kind of billing rates we need to come up from the client but at times what if uh, if your PM or someone assigned this task for you. Shakil, why can't you do the CBA and let us know with the numbers and we'll quickly have a discussion on this. Or at least you should be in a position to understand uh, how do they do the cost benefit analysis. Right, right, right. right, right. Because right. you are the one who are going to deal with uh, at times, you know, to, mm -hmm. to be the face of the organization, Shakil. People don't know who is your uh, the managing director is, people don't know who is your, uh, you know, quality tested, uh, testing guys or the production guys are. But people don't know who you are and who your project manager is because we are the two stakeholders. Most of the times we deal with our customers, our clients, right? Yeah, right. So we should always be equipped with this info. And we're going to see that. And something on SOW stands for Statement of Work. Okay. So once you gather, once you finalize all this billing part, how do, will you document this info? Why we actually use a Statement of Work? That's what we're going to look into and uh, something on SDLC, Software yeah. Development Lifecycle. Yeah. We have mul many methodologies here. What methodology you guys are using at your work? Uh, they call it, oh, uh, it's an XP, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's not full fledged Agile. They, they pretend to be Agile. Some of the aspects of the development are Agile, but uh, you know the QA process is not fully you know, uh, Agile implemented. So yeah, I would say you know they somewhat agile. See everyone, the reason, most of the most, exactly the most of the organizations they'll customize the process and they'll simply call it we are following in agile. That's what will happen. Right. Everyone have their own tailored process. Depends on the requirements right. we do it. Right. So we will see that. So as you're already aware of it, it's very easy for me to uh, trust me if I'm explaining for a layman. So it's a little bit difficult for them to understand in the initial days. Okay, what is this and what what are we going to do? So I need to spend much time with them on uh, explaining this concept more and more. And something on uh, probably the metrics, uh, which you might have aware of it, quality metrics, we're going to see that. Mm -hmm. And something on CMMI. Now CMMI actually plays a major role. Not only CMMI, there are uh, multiple standards like this. What kind of uh, form you're, you're dealing with, I mean you're working for, is it a CMMI level 5 or CMMI perform or ISO? What sort of appraisal your organization have? Um, I am not fully sure, but uh, as far as I I heard, uh, I think there were, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a CMMI level 3. But uh, I'm not. I'm not sure about. I'm not sure about uh, their, you know, the CMM. So once you are about to get into a VA role or any sort of a kind of SME manager role, first thing we need is first thing you need to know about your organization. Okay, what we yeah. are, mm -hmm. what are we doing, and what is our vision or any mission for the company for the organization. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason why I'm saying, mm -hmm. for example, you said uh, you. Are you, have you studied, I mean, what's your highest qualification? Uh, did um, a master's. In master's. Now if I say, Shaquille, no, you haven't. You haven't done your master's. What do you do? Uh, you show proof. Probably. Yeah, you'll show the proof, right? Now if you take an yeah. organization, let's say you're going to get a client. Now you said you, Dell is your client, right? Now, at the same time, even I'm coming for the bid. I'm saying that uh, we provide, we are a CMI level 5 company. We provide 100% quality products. And uh, you guys are going with CMI level 3. Why? Please come to us. If you say that, for example, we provide services for a little bit less of cost. Or we provide a quality mm -hmm. service. Of course, Dell will come to us. I can take the business from your organization. I mean, 
way we present ourselves. It all depends on uh, that. So at the end of the day, an appraisal but for an organic only for us. You did your masters, you thought, okay, that will you uh, enhance your skill set and you can uh, can acquire more knowledge there, right? Okay. The appraisal structure will help for the organizations too. So how do they actually, how do they see this, this appraisal, how it works, that's what we're going to see. The knowledge, where and how to acquire. And if you ask someone, ask anyone, even if you ask me, no one can acquire knowledge about a particular domain in a day's time. Right? It's all purely depends right. on the way you the way you work, the way you deal with the things at your workplace. Okay. So you have to learn something while doing it. Then only you can acquire it. So I can tell I can tell you I'm a, I'm in more into a banking guy and financial guy. You can do this, you can do this, learn this and you can acquire more information. Yeah, but we're going to see a little bit uh, more in our session about the domain. And the term stakeholders, so everyone have uh, their different views and stakeholders. So who are they? And why the stakeholder management is so important for a business analyst role? What kind of roles and responsibilities they do? And something like a bread and butter for us, that's a requirement. And then the engineering process we're going to see here, which means the basics of definition, what is a requirement is all about, how do you gather a requirement? Once you gather a requirement, how do you analyze it? Once you analyze it, then uh, is there any way we do we categorize the requirements and then prioritize it, or we don't? Or what is this requirement? Stability index is all about something on JAN sessions, stands for Joint Application Design or Development. And these are things we want to touch with. In few organizations, they might not have a, a BRD and an FRD or an FSD. So everything they'll document it under one BRD. So they'll get a scope from your clients, from their clients every month. Few organizations, they will receive a BRD and we as the BAs, we will come up with an FSD for the same. So it all depends on the organization, what kind of naming they use, what kind of documents they use. So URD here stands for user requirement document. I'm sure you're aware of the BRD, business customer or technical, what are these documents are. and uh, the most important thing is a use case and you need yeah. to know how to write a, a use case we're going to see how to write a true use case in detail what are the sections we need to look into or precisely we need to write and something about functional explanation sessions and design and development cases we don't do anything much but i'm going to touch base a little bit on what do we do in design and development and then the testing thing which is very important as you're already a tester so Mm -hmm. So, probably this is what I teach to the others. So, what is a verification? What is validation? What are the different types of testing available? What is a UAD session? What is a change request? Is a defect a change request? If you're unable to deliver something, how to communicate? And what is an RTM requirements traceability matrix? What is a change request log? What is UML? UML is uh, a little bit important. Few clients required. Uh, at times they do ask uh, UML expertise. So what is UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. It has nine diagrams. And what are these nine diagrams and what are the utility? And the tools. Tools like uh, uh, project is again for uh, URMS project. Apart from which uh, there are many other tools like uh, see even though we are in the IT industry we have something like a divide and rule policy. Okay, Not all the organizations are loyal to Microsoft. Only the best thing is your enemy's enemy is your best friend. Agree? <laughs> right, so Microsoft and uh, IBM. So they have all uh, like uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi products. If Coke yeah. come up with one product, Pepsi will come up with the same. If they come up with one, these guys will come up with the same. Right? <laughs> right. So that's, that's how it will work. So we're going to see in detail. We have a few tools which we need to get some expertise on. I'm going to exclusively deal with the Microsoft Visual in sessions and tools, but if you ask me, the tools for a business analyst, the very important tool for a business analyst is code processing tools like your Excel, Microsoft Word, and PowerPoint. These are the two things. These are the three things which you need in detail. Okay, and then something on uh, KOM, kickoff meeting. Now, what are the white frames or mockups or prototypes are? How do we do? 
we'll do one or two in a session using Microsoft Visual. And these are the few things which I kept here for freshers in case uh, most of the times I deal with uh, these MBA guys who are on QRM flow PTs, they'll come to me for the trainings. So for them, it's all uh, know how to in the words, what is a chart summary, how to write a business email. You, I'll touch base with these things. Something on a weekly status report. And the one important thing for us is risk. Risk management is a very important thing. So we're going to exclusively deal with uh, risk management. As part of risk management, you have uh, risk analysis or the impact analysis. Uh, what is a risk mitigation plan your PM will come up with, or contingency plan. So we're going to see the entire risk management concept and something on gap analysis and something on versioning and repositories. Probably you can take tool or a shape point tool we're going to see here. On gold plating and missing list, we'll see what are these. And all this here, my L5 standard templates I will share with you. Case studies, nothing but the assignments probably. One or two, I I expect you to time and that deliver it to me. So that's uh, some feedback on the same and something on resume services if you required and mock interviews. So this is what I actually deal with. This is what I deliver in uh, our classes. So I explain them what are the different designations, roles, uh, and uh, you know, factors and product based company, service based company. So once we're done with the session, and for that particular session, if any supporting documents required, yeah, I will uh, provide the same mm -hmm. documentation. So, so the info, the documents, and all which I will provide. But there are a few okay. documents which uh, I got from my live project.